In Creole Parametric, you can use zones to create 3D cross sections in parts and assemblies and select components in an assembly. This is mostly outdated functionality. I'll show why at the end, but let's learn how to use zones. To create a brand new zone, there are two different ways of invoking the command. You can go to the Manage Views drop down menu, and here is the zone command. When I click on the button, it will bring up the zone creation dialog box and you'll notice up at the top it says XSEC. That's short for cross section. So again, a zone is pretty much a cross section. The other way of creating a zone, let me cancel out of the dialog box. I will click OK to quit. If you go to the view manager, which looks like a camera on a sheet of paper and then click on the sections tab, you can choose the new icon and down at the bottom, here we have the option for creating a new zone. So I will choose zone and it gives a default name. I'm going to call this zone underscore A and then hit the enter key. And it opens up the same dialog box as we had before. So in this dialog box, you can choose the zone scope. By default, it is set to the model that you have open, although you could choose an individual component in an assembly if you want to. And then we have the area where we select our references for our different creation methods. In another video, I showed how to create a 3D cross section using datum planes. That's the half space option. In this video, I'm going to go through the other three options as well. And the first one that I'm going to use is going to be inside, outside. And this is for inside or outside of a quilt. And let me turn on the display of a quilt in my model. There we go. That is good. And let me collapse the tree. I don't need to see it anymore. So I have this extrude that was created as an enclosed quilt. Let me use the pick icon in order to make sure that I am selecting it. There is the quilt that is listed. And by default, the zone will include the components that are inside the quilt and also the ones that intersect with the quilt. If you want to use the outside of the quilt, you can use this button in order to change the orientation. Now it says the outside of the quilt, but let's go and click the button again to go back to the inside of the quilt. And we have a preview button in here that will show you, essentially it's just going to show you the components that would be in the zone of the quilt. But we can see that from the quilt itself. Now I will click the OK button. And it did some thinking. Let me clean up my display by hiding that quilt once more and collapsing my tree. And let me go back to the orient, or excuse me, the sections tab that I was on. Here we have zone A. You can right click on it and choose activate or double click on it. And let's give it some time to think. And so there you see the components that were included inside of the zone. So that is one way of creating a brand new zone. Let me double click on no cross section to bring everything back that I had before. Let's take a look at another creation method. I will choose the new button and then zone and let's call this zone B and hit the enter key. And this time in the dialog box, I'll use the drop down list to change to radial distance from. And then when I click on that, you have a, another drop down list where you can choose what kind of reference that you want to use. By default, it is set to any, but you can change it to essentially points and vertices or different lines or curves or your 3D entities like different surfaces or cables or parts or sub assemblies and so on. So let's choose, I'm going to choose vertex from over here and let me move the, I'll just pick this vertex and right now it has a radius value. Let me change that to something a little bit smaller. Let's change that to 50 and hit the enter key. You can see a bit of a preview of how big it would be on here. Let me change that more. Let me change to 10, a little smaller. Now let's change back to something in the middle. That is good. That is what I want. And now I will click the OK button. 
Now, one thing to note, when you create a zone using this method of radial distance from, you can't activate it. You can't use it as a cross section. This is one of those zones that is used for selecting various different components. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. All right, let's create a, another zone. I will go to the new button and then choose zone. And for this one, I will call it zone C and hit the enter key. And this time for the method, I will use offset from a coordinate system. And now for the coordinate system that I want to reference, let me turn on my coordinate system display. And I'm just going to pick this coordinate system, my default coordinate system for the assembly. And then you can define your different offsets from that coordinate system. And so I can say, hey, let's go in the X direction. Let's make it negative 20 and negative 20 in the Y for that one. And the Z, let's also go to minus 20. And let's change it to positive 20 for offsets from the coordinate system in the other direction. And in this case, when I click on the preview button, well, we really don't get a preview in this particular situation. Let's click the OK button in order to define it. Oh, yeah, and once again, you have the flip button if you want to change the orientation from inside of the distances offset from the coordinate system to the outside. Let's click the OK button for that one. And once again, if I right click on it, I can choose activate. And in this particular situation, it'll show the different components that line up inside of that particular zone that I defined. So that's good for that one. Let's go back to no cross section. And for the last one, which I showed in another video, let me turn on my datum plane display, turn off my coordinate systems. Let's create a brand new zone. And I'll call this one zone D and hit the enter key and we'll leave the default method of half space and so then you're going to pick a datum plane and I can pick this particular datum plane and right now it is using the negative side of the datum plane let's flip that I want those components over there and you can also combine other additional half spaces in order to section off or quarter or uh, make it into a quadrant. So let's use the plus sign and you can choose whether it's going to be and or or for the combination of the selections. So let me choose this other datum plane in the model and I am going to flip its orientation as well. So that's good. Let's click the OK button. And the zone is created. Let me turn off my datum plane display. You can see a little preview of the box on the screen. Let's right click on it and choose to activate this particular cross section. So you can see the components that fall inside of this particular section that was created. All right, so that is how you can create your zones using the four different methods. Uh, I want to right click on the zones to show you that you have a bunch of different options in here. So for example, you could show the section. There's also the option to show the region boundary and you can also delete and rename your different zones. Also, if you go to the options drop down menu, you see a number of the other different options and here you can choose the display. Here we have for the options, I can choose the normal or you can choose if you only want to see the zone references, zone components or zone only. So a bunch of different options that you have available to you in here. Let me go back to no cross section to bring the rest of the model back. Now let's take a look at some of the other different uses of your zones. So I mentioned that you can use them to clip the model. In other words, show the 3D cross section. But let me close out of here. You can also use zones as a selection tool. And that was a big use back in the day when this functionality was a lot more popular. If I go to the find icon in the lower right hand corner, which is also the keyboard shortcut of control F, you can look for, in this case, I'll change the drop down list to component. 
and I'm going to look by the geometry tab and here you have the zone option and inside the zone and then I can go to the drop down list we can see our different zones that were located inside of this particular model and now I will click the find now button and it's going to do some thinking and so it found a total of 1000 different components that are located in the zone I can do control a and then add them to the selection list oops so add zone D selected in here let's remove that and now I can click on the close button so now all those different components that crossed over into the zone are selected and then I can perform actions on that component one of the different kinds of actions that are popular when you're using zones is to change the component display style so for example if I wanted all these different components to be transparent I could do that one of the big uses of zones back in the day was for selecting components in a simplified representation for example if I go to the manage views tab right now I'm on the simplified rep tab I can choose the new button I am not going to save my modifications and now for the name of the rep I will accept the default name and hit the enter key here we have the component chooser dialog box by default everything is set to exclude you can go to the model rules tab and then edit the rules for this simplified rep I'm going to create a new rule and I'm going to choose the master representation and let's choose new to create a new condition now I'll select the components in zone B so I'm going to call it zone B for the condition and we're looking for solid models since I was previously on the geometry tab I'm in the geometry tab here let's go to the drop down list and I will choose zone B as what I want to select and then click the OK button and then click oh let's click evaluate right in here that way I don't have to do it in the component chooser dialog box and then click the OK button and here we can see a preview of the components that would be in the master representation let's choose the open button and there we have our simplified representation based on those different zones but let me go back to the automatic rep so you can see the rest of the components in this particular assembly and close out of the view manager and one other method and I'll show this in another different video there's also some more outdated functionality for simplified representations involving something called envelopes as a method of substitution and that is something that can use these different zones as well but again it's not really used anymore let me close out of that one and at the beginning of the video I mentioned that zones are kind of outdated one of the reasons for that is because of this icon here the 3d box select that was added into the software a long time ago and so one of the most popular methods of creating a zone is that half space method for one side or the other side of a datum plane and here when you use the 3d box select that's a much easier way and quicker way of selecting a bunch of different components in your model so there you have it zones something to keep in your back pocket that you might find useful one day